Good morning. I'm Dario Corbetta, Director of Achiman at the National Association of Woodworking Machinery Manufacturers and Director of Xilexpo, the worldwide biennial exhibition of woodworking technology organized and sponsored by Achiman, our association. This year, Xilexpo celebrates its 24th anniversary. It was first organized in 1968, and it has been supporting the development and growth of the industry ever since. The woodworking machinery industry is one of the prides of the Italian mechanical engineering sector. This year will be uh, hosted in Halls 1 and 3 of the Milan St. Rose Trade Fair Center, and uh, the exhibition will cover a surface area of 25,000 square meters with 270 exhibitors. Uh, more than 30% of exhibitors will be international ones. How many Xilexpo exhibitions have you seen, Director? In my capacity as a Simal uh, officer have been attending it uh, since uh, uh, 1992 as a visitor instead. I started visiting it uh, even earlier in uh, 1984. What has changed over the years? Uh, what do you like about it? Uh, what would you have liked not to see happening? The whole industry has changed. Uh, Xil Expo has been uh, following the industry growth. It has mirrored uh, the developments of the Italian woodworking machinery sector in the past uh, 30 or so years. And the industry first grew dramatically and then suffered the downturn in the market. Uh, it experienced corporation concentration trends and currently, presently, there are two very large sized companies uh, accounting for something like 50 to 60 percent of the Italian industry revenues. Next to them, uh, there are many small and medium sized companies which still offer very valuable technological solutions. These companies operate uh, globally. Um, they cover a niche market, uh, and they operate worldwide, but still they have a very niche-oriented uh, uh, um, offer. Xilexpo has always been a showcase for the Italian uh, production and products, but it also has a very strong international vocation. This, clear, this doubt has been cleared, hasn't it? Well, Xilexpo has always had an international soul and a flair. The percentage of exhibitors, uh, international exhibitors at Xil Expo has always been uh, around 30%, and the same goes for visitors. 30% uh, of visitors come from abroad. So the exhibition is absolutely an international one. Of course, like many other um, exhibitions, uh, the issue of proximity is uh, um, a favorable factor. Most of visitors come from Italy, 70% do so. And this vast majority of visitors is concentrated in the region of Lombardy and surrounding regions. We also need to consider that uh, woodworking um, technology is concentrated in Brianza, the province of Vicenza, Rimini, Pesaro and Tuscany. Um, and so there's no need to uh, get very far from Milan to have the almost totality of woodworking machinery manufacturers represented. So, um, in the industry, there has been a continuous increase of the number of exhibitions, and this has uh, changed the perception of the function of an international um, trade fair, hasn't it? Uh, I think we need to distinguish two stages here, the pre-COVID era, where many different uh, exhibitions were organized. Uh, there were local organizers uh, that would organize their own exhibitions as the market was developing. We've seen um, exhibitions in Southeast Asia, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and before COVID, we had already witnessed a tendency to reduce the number of exhibitions, uh, and the focus uh, was placed on more internationally acknowledged exhibitions. In the post-COVID era, the situation has changed completely. We're still in the transitioning phase. Companies have uh, been relying on other promotional tools, uh, such as direct marketing, um, companies have uh, started to save on uh, uh, international travels of their sales field forces, and so uh, exhibitions have changed. 
as anticipated, uh, the exhibition industry is all still changing. We'll see in the next three to four years how the new normal uh, will look like. It will probably be different than the uh, situation in the pre-COVID era. So I believe there w I, I believe that only the most important uh, exhibitions in terms of interesting technological solutions will survive. However, in the future, there may still be some minor exhibitions. Axial Expo is organized by a national association. Are national trade associations changing too? Are companies changing? Uh, where are they headed? Uh, what is your perception as a director? As I always uh, say, Axial Expo and uh, another US-based uh, um, exhibition is the only one organized uh, completely by a trade association, a national one. The purpose is to promote the industry and not so much business itself. So we do our best um, to enable our exhibitors to be happy and promote uh, their technological solutions uh, in the best possible way. As to your question, relating to changes in the industry, if I understand you correctly, well, international changes in terms of uh, um, shifts, uh, in terms of technology, you've seen so many exhibitions. What is your perception? Is there any big revolutionary uh, change going on, if any? When I started off working, a numerically controlled machine was something like a space shift. And nowadays, uh, uh, it's pretty common to see one, even at uh, um, the basic uh, w working realities. Then that, the autom that, that was the era of automation, connectivity, and now the focus is on environmental friendliness and uh, energy savings, as required by Industry 5.0 measures. Well, Industry 5.0 program uh, is changing this scenario, isn't it? Yes, I would say that is the case. Uh, um, recently, in the past few days, the enforcement uh, regulation for uh, Industry 5.0 program has been promulgated. The focus uh, is uh, on the Italian market. It is a red retrospective measure, so all the orders entered after January the 1st, 2024 are within the scope of Industry 5.0 program. Its validity covers two years up until 2025, and up until today, the effect, the impact was like a braking system because it was first announced last year and the, the program plans for incentives for new acquisitions to reach up to 45% of the uh, value of an asset. And so um, people have been waiting to make these decisions until it is fully implemented. Um, on the other hand, though, from now onwards, uh, since the implementation has uh, started, uh, the market will definitely grow. Uh, Industry 5.0 program uh, covers all uh, uh, instrumental assets. Uh, 6.4 um, million euros have been made available uh, for acquisitions to be completed by the end of next year. And so you can easily understand how the market is going to grow and develop. My wish is that these type of uh, measures can become structural measures. Otherwise, the market will be doped for these two years uh, and then we'll need further doping substances uh, to keep growing. So this is typical of the uh, post-pandemic uh, incentive measures. Econo economy has always been doped by some fundamental uh, support measures. Uh, is our industry uh, ready for the next level of maturity or can our sector um, do away with these measures? Well, mm, the um, 
machine fleet uh, becomes obsolete, um, new machines are increasingly more and more intensely connected, um, energy saving and environmental friendliness requirements uh, have to be implemented, and so we need to drive this transition. So 45% uh, uh, asset value incentives uh, are very interesting, they are very high. Within the scope of Industry 4.0, 20% of the asset value is covered by incentives, and that's not little. If you add the Sabatini incentives uh, on top of it, uh, you oh, reach uh, a percentage of 23-24%. So there are already some structural measures uh, available. Industry 5.0 is an extraordinary program that will give new momentum to a new generation of machines. The trade association and the companies represented in it have changed a lot. There has been a shrinkage in the number of players. Is this normal? Is this physiological uh, for brand to concentrate in a few names. Yes, that's part of the uh, evolution of the industry. In order to be internationally competitive businesses, uh, you need to be of a larger size. And have we reached this point maybe later than other industries have? Yes, I guess we have, but we now have uh, players that other industries uh, don't have uh, our large corporations have nothing to envy out of other uh, worldwide corporations uh, thinking of the machine tools industry or packaging industry the woodworking machinery uh, players uh, are universal global ones no doubt a big change has occurred archimal membership numbers have decreased we initially had 230 members uh, 12 years ago and now we only have uh, 140 um, that's not due to the fact that people are not happy with the services we offer, but because the companies that used to be members are no longer in the market. They seized their, they closed their businesses or operations, or they've been taken over by other comp companies. Well, this is a sign of a stronger industrial culture too. Definitely, um, the industrial culture is nowadays uh, stronger. And next to already existing companies, uh, uh, we all wish that other major uh, corporate groups uh, can emerge so that the continuity of the industry is ensured in the future. Well, so if that's the old dilemma between going big or staying small, so the worldwide market uh, is meant for uh, large corporations. And how about the small uh, realities? Well, by personal experience, running a small business um, has uh, clear advantages. Uh, small sized companies uh, are better responsive in the short term and more flexible. Um, on the other hand, the personal commitment uh, to run a small business uh, is huge because the number of people uh, filling the different roles and responsibilities uh, is a small one. So multiple functions and roles are represented uh, by the same person, the same individual. This is good on the one hand because of synergy, but on the other hand, it can also be a disadvantage because you cannot dive into the uh, deepest uh, aspects. And on top of that, not every company is ready and open to um, have new managers. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a, a correct point that you're making. And I can say it for myself uh, uh, personally, there is a tendency to just centralize functions. And then another aspect is the generational gap. The son of a businessman may be wanting to perform a different job, possibly. And on top of that, uh, the Italy and Germany bond uh, is now being flanked by other big players uh, that will be at Skill Expo too. Yes, I think you are referring to the Chinese or uh, Turkish players. As for China, well, um, there is an estimated amount uh, of 
more than 1,000 woodworking machine manufacturers. We don't know the exact number because there is no national trade association representing the whole country. And this applies not only to the woodworking industry, but to other sectors too. Actually, we were the ones that filled the uh, technology gap in China that was, has been there since the beginning of the century up to the 80s or 90s. And how did we do that? We brought to there the technology that we had developed ourselves. The Chinese have taken ownership of it, and now they are offering it on our markets. So this is uh, physiological. Should, be, should we be afraid uh, um, of this phenomenon, or is this part of the game in an international market? Well, yes, in a competitive international market, this is the game. Uh, we need to, to become aware of this fact. I think that 30 to 40 percent of uh, smartphones uh, come from uh, China. And uh, China has uh, 1.3, 1.6 billion inhabitants. Uh, um, its economy is uh, one of the fastest growing economies worldwide, and so in our industry, true, too, uh, we'll have um, Chinese players coming up with very interesting proposals. Do you think this, com this competition was a good factor for our companies? Was it a stimulating factor? Well. This depends on the type of uh, uh, business. It's a tough question. I need to use some diplo diplomacy here. I would say that uh, um, Italian industrialists are really becoming aware of how the relevance of the Chinese players uh, only now. So we need to wait a few more years to really see uh, to what extent the market is ready to respond to this phenomenon. The Chinese players' presence in Europe and Italy, too, is certainly becoming relevant. As you know, this interview is being recorded a few days before the uh, exhibition opens, and it will open um, uh, the operations of Xilexpo Digital. Uh, would you like to say something in terms of new concept uh, to uh, the viewers and to the uh, visitors of Xilexpo? Well, in the future, no doubt, we will have to redesign uh, the exhibition, and we will have to bear in mind that, that woodworking machines not only process wood, but also other materials like carbon fibers or composite materials, advanced materials. And these materials, we need to be represented uh, at the future exhibitions, too. So we are now starting into a different uh, exhibition uh, concept, uh, which can be extended to other complementary technologies. So there is a, a third uh, keyword that uh, uh, we will uh, have to acknowledge uh, digitalization, sustainability, and also multi-materiality, isn't it? Exactly, that's exactly the point. Uh, multiple materials uh, will become uh, very relevant. Uh, uh, machining, to machi machining tools uh, are able to process uh, different uh, types of materials. Uh, so um, we have to uh, go into this direction we don't we need to open up uh, uh, the woodworking industry to other novelties for sure the multimateriality industry is a multitude of different aspects and elements it's going to be a challenging experience and we i think we are mature enough and we have experience enough to win this challenge well there are quite a number of uh, member companies that have addressed uh, these new um, aspects, these new materials. Wood is great, but there is also something else coming up in the market. Yes, this is a tendency that has been developing for the past few years. The need was felt uh, to open up uh, the association membership and uh, the exhibition to other new technologies processing different materials. And now the time has come to really develop a completely new concept uh, for 2026. 
So as a journalist, uh, let me just tell you, the uh, Xil Expo 2024 edition will be the last one with these characteristics. And in 2026, we will see maybe a younger type of uh, uh, exhibition events and closer to the market um, developments. For sure, everything is being um, started at the moment. We, I can't make any official announcement now. It's something that we are working on. We feel there is a strong need and demand to do that. And for sure, we will implement and offer something extremely different, uh, something extremely interesting for our visitors and exhibitors. No doubt that there is a drop in the number of orders, and this is very frightening for Italian companies and also more frightening for companies from countries we don't want to mention. However, revenues in the past few years were pretty satisfactory. Don't you think it's strange for companies to be so fearful at the first difficulty or hindrance? Well, our businessmen are very good. They've been very good in the past to ride the wave of the uh, woodworking machine uh, industry that really goes through remarkable ups and downs, growth uh, cycles and decline cycles uh, develop at a very fast pace. Uh, at a faster pace than the um, cycle of the GDP. If the GDP goes down by 2%, our industry goes down by 20%. And of course, I'm exaggerating, just to give you an idea. However, um, during the COVID era and after COVID, um, something extraordinary happened. The situation in the market uh, in 2020 was uh, uh, characterized by a downturn. And then at the end of the year, it recovered and 2021 and 22 had extraordinary results. Uh, so we experienced a very high uh, growth rate. And now we are going back to the situation of uh, 2019. We can see this uh, through the order indexes. And going back to the situation in nine of 2019, you can appreciate a sudden and remarkable decline trend. And so the businessman looking at the number uh, at the numbers and percentages uh, can only see remarkable um, drops in the numbers. But the benchmark is an extraordinary period of time. We hadn't experienced such high growth rate since the second post-World War. It was a, 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 an unusual tidal wave that we need to muster. Can we still be optimistic? Uh, do you think the market will still create uh, a demand for the Italian and the international market? And do you think the Italian and international companies will be able to cater to the needs of the market by offering a continuously evolving technology? Absolutely, we are optimistic. Uh, let's look at the order indexes. Uh, we're going back uh, to uh, the level of 2019, which was a very good level. And also we should bear in mind of the Middle East crisis and the Russian conflict which kind of destabilized uh, the markets in the Western countries, uh, also due to the sanctions. So all in all, the market situation uh, is a kind of stabilizing. Director, let's now wish uh, a successful Xil Expo to visitors and exhibitors. Of course, I'd like to wish you all uh, a successful visit at Xil Expo and let's meet in 2026 with a new concept.